I want to start uh, this conversation with a, you know, kind of an anecdotal story. A few years back, before uh, you know, this buzz around artificial intelligence really reached the current level that we're at today, I was actually involved in a recruitment effort uh, for a client, specifically seeking a, a really specialized uh, job. And now, the the job description you guys have probably seen these before, right? The job description is hyper complex. It really demanded a, a strong understanding of multiple disciplines in this industry. And, and obviously, there's this deadline that's looming. The customer was on our heels. And so the team and I, we were, we were pouring over, like literally felt like hundreds of resumes in order to find that perfect candidate. But really, the, the match just felt impossible to fill, right? The purple squirrel. So, so one of these days, I, uh, the, a longer day, if I recall, I think I was on my fifth cup of coffee, I decided to play a little bit of like cold case detective work. And I went back to some of the early resumes that we had already culled through and I kind of set aside. Uh, and as I was calling through, kind of going through these early resumes we looked at, one, uh, you know, kind of caught my eye, right? This candidate, while they didn't specifically fit the job description, that purple squirrel job description, something about their experience stood out to me. It intrigued me. It's kind of a gut feeling. Uh, it was a bit of intuition on my part that said, you know what, maybe this person might bring something unique to the table. And I'm not sure if you guys have been in a situation like this before, but what do you typically do? Well, you trust your gut, right? You got to do what you got to do. You So I reached out to the candidate, initiated the conversation. Through the course of the conversation, realized that, you know what, it wasn't captured in their resume, but they had done some amazing things. They had done projects that aligned very similar to what the job description that I was looking for actually had. They showcased expertise in their own field, but also the ability to adapt, to overcome challenge in, in, in a variety of different sectors. And these things weren't really captured in the resume, and they really weren't captured in the job description either for the client that I was looking for. But regardless, that gut feeling, we saw that strength there, we proceeded with the candidate, we made the submission, the client accepted the candidate, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it was like the match made in proverbial staffing heaven, right? Uh, the candidate met the expectations, surpassed them, and, and what was the praise that came from the client was they brought fresh perspective, they brought innovation to our team. What made you think to bring this candidate to the table? Now, this experience, it taught me really the irreplaceable value of human intuition. And, and really, at the end of the day, the understanding and the connection that we as humans bring to the staffing industry. And that truly is the value that staffing brings to the table. It's a reminder that really the most important, the most potent tool that we have is our ability to connect with another human being on a personal level, both the client side and on the talent side. So as we're standing on this on this edge and this precipice, the brink of this AI uh, revolution, this takeover, I think about scenarios like this, and I'm sure everybody on this uh, webinar and this cast has has been in situations similar to this. That as we look at the power of AI, we have to retain. We have to do everything we we can to retain the human essence that really forms the core of the staffing industry. And this in our industry is deeply personal to the people's lives that we impact day in and day out. It makes us human. It makes our industry very human. And it makes what we do have immeasurable value. So when I think about that example, it, it becomes apparent that this is a challenge for us, right? In the world of staffing, as an industry, we're going through this massive shift, a shift that's really driven by technology. And, and not just any form of technology. At the end of the day, at the very forerunner, at the forefront, is artificial intelligence in this, this technology that really promises to redefine not just our industry, really the fabric of all operations, strategy for business in general, especially in the white collar world. So it's really important for us to keep that in mind, to see it coming, and realize that there's factors in our industry that are making this uh, uh, situation even more pointed, the talent shortages that we're experiencing across various sectors in our economy. And, and really, skills gap and talent shortage is not new uh, to the staffing industry. This has been a really a lingering issue even prior to the pandemic, prior to uh, we're seeing massive, you know, low, low, low unemployment rates, uh, massive demand sh slowdowns across the board. It's been a persistent challenge 
But as businesses are moving at a more rapid pace because of technology, this demand for talent is becoming exacerbated. It's becoming even more apparent. And we find ourselves in this, this situation where we see a, a strong job market. We see a job market where unemployment rates are under 5% in the three and change levels. And we see these shortages in skilled talent for the jobs we have. And despite the headlines and despite a little bit of a, a uncertainty in the economy, I know all of our branches and many of yours are probably still sitting in a position where we have open and unfilled job orders that we're just struggling to find people to place on it. And the reality is this landscape has changed, right? And we have to change with it. It doesn't mean that we can simply throw our hands up and give up. We can do the best we can do. We have to evolve. It gives us signals that evolution is really critical. And that's where this conversation really uh, brings us to today, an evolution where technology and humanity coalesce. And AI acts not as a, a replacement. As some, if, if you look at some of the prognosticators, they, they fear that, oh, AI is going to take over the world. No, it's not a replacement. It's an ally. It's augmenting and amplifying our capabilities as humans to enhance our efficiency and really allow us to more effectively navigate this rapidly changing world that we're living in today. And we can do so using these tools with better insights, and with more foresight to predict what's coming down the, the pipeline. So th the real question that is, is there in front of us is whether to embrace the change and how to do so in a way that really aligns with that core value in the staffing industry that's it's really long defined our industry, that personal connection I talked about earlier, that intuition, a deep understanding of, of humanity. So as we dive into the discussion, we're going to be exploring the role of AI in the staffing industry from the standpoint of augmenting the business development process. I know David mentioned they're going to be talking about that a little bit later through focused approach on that regard, thinking about the recruitment process uh, from the data, pro the operational side of things, data validation techniques, streamlining branch operations and uh, oversights. Really, as you start going down the list, the implications and impact that AI can have on a staffing branch are almost endless. But as we stand at this crossroads, we have a responsibility too to remember that we are still involved in a very human-centric industry. So we have this path where technology meets humanity, where innovation meets intuition. Uh, and, and again, at the end of the day, we don't just have to adapt for the sake of adapt adaptation. We can thrive amidst that evolution and change. So ultimately, if we can keep adapting, we can keep elevating, we get to the point where we become like heroes, staffing gods in this new era of cognitive collaboration, hence the theme of our discussion today. So we're going to embark on this journey together. We're going to dive right in and look at the current landscape in the staffing industry and see the future, uh, a future where we can be powered by this symbiotic relationship between humanity and uh, technology. And, and so I set the table earlier in regards to the staffing uh, shortages, the, the talent shortages, excuse me, that we've seen across the board. And we've seen uh, this talent shortage continue to widen and create a, a, a deeper shift in the labor market. Uh, some statistics to help underline that point. Let me just run through a few. And I know these are not going to be really uh, new to anyone, uh, but just emphasizing the point we have today. Uh, data point number one, that the number of job openings is out outpacing the number of available workers still, despite the uh, headlines, despite a little bit of uncertainty. July of 23, we saw 11.3 million job openings in the U.S., but only 8.7 million unemployed workers. And that shifts a little bit every month. Um, but still, you're talking about over 2 million more job openings than unemployed workers. Why can't they fill those jobs? The skills gap. That is continuing to widen out. Recent survey found that 72% of employers, 72%, that's 7 out of 10 employers, have difficulty finding workers with the skills they need. Why? Another data point for you to think about. The labor force participation rate is almost at an all-time low. We keep seeing declines on that front. Uh, the last data point that I pulled was 62.2% labor force participation rate. That's down about a point from a few years prior. We keep seeing that dipping down. That means there are few more active job seekers, a few more active, few less, excuse me, active uh, uh, participants in the workforce today. And we continue to see retirees exiting the workforce. We talked about the baby boomers before. They're still going out at mass numbers. Unbelievable statistic. For those of you who are in the healthcare staffing space today on this call, I just can't believe what you guys are going through. Uh, they say healthcare by 2030 will have a shortage of 2.2 million 
workers, 2.2 million workers. Unbelievable. And healthcare is not the only one. When you start digging into industries that are affected by skills gap, technology industry has been feeling that pain for a long time. Healthcare, we just covered it. Construction, uh, carpenters, electricians, tradesmen, plumbers, uh, all talent shortages across the board. The logistics space, truck drivers, warehouse workers. If you're in the commercial space like us, we're feeling that every single day. And last in the top five of most, indus- most affected industries by talent shortages, education. So teachers, and, and specifically science teachers, education, uh, STEM teachers there. So it's a little bit scary when you look at the top five industries impacted by talent shortages. And we're going to ro- roll the AI piece in here in just a minute on this front. But education, who's teaching our children? Construction, who's building our homes? Healthcare, who's taking care of our health as we age? These are all industries that are impacted by these skill gaps and these skill shortages. Scary stuff. So how are we going to uh, really uh, wrestle with that? And as we really wrestle with the the talent shortage, that's where we have to focus on the future. How can we use technology and the advancements in technology to reshape how we go about uh, recruiting, bringing people to the workforce, bringing people to new careers potentially. And that goes back inevitably to the discussion of AI. And AI is not only revolutionizing healthcare and some of the other sectors we talked about, it's making massive impact here in the staffing industry because we can impact every one of those industries I referenced before. So just a quick rundown, just for information purposes, since we're talking data, a a brief background on AI. Uh, You know, I know everybody's talking AI right now because of generative AI. But the reality is AI as a whole, as a kind of a body of work, has been around for for quite some time. And the idea around AI is basically any kind of computer software system that can provide uh, or perform tasks that are uh, similar or require human intelligence, if you will, problem solving, pattern recognition, language understanding, things of that sort. And over the past really decade, AI has slowly grown and developed and matured behind the scenes. A lot of people aren't didn't really take much note. But you remember seeing the IBM Watson commercials back in the day before this generative AI, AI craze? I did a quick search. Watson had been around, has been around since 2010. I still remember when I think it went on Jeopardy and beat everyone <laughs> there and beat the chess masters and all that fun stuff. So why is it so hot today? Well, gener- insert generative AI. And this idea of generative of AI is quite literally... Uh, uh, an opening, a window to AI for the layperson, for non, for the non-techie, because you go to a website. It's it's fun to play with. It's easy to play with. You pull up. It's almost like a search bar. You can ask this oracle anything. It's like a magic eight ball or a genie in the lamp that basically types in an answer and provide or types in a question. Excuse me, and it provides a really robust answer because it's digging into these massive bodies of data. You know, it's it's as game changing to the internet to to Google was to the internet. As, uh, as as this AI is, the generative AI is to bring a light to us all to be able to use this tool. So at the end of the day, AI has been around for a long time, but now it's cu- catching wind. It's more efficient. It's more uh, accessible by everybody. So at the end of the day, uh, we see this landscape is taking note and we're seeing implications. And, and this landscape is evolving rapidly where we see that the human elements come in and the potential risk for uh, taking away jobs or people's that fear that may come in. But at the end of the day, we need to look at it from out of the mindset of really abundance. It's an amplifier. It's an amplifier of human capabilities. And so let me share some thoughts, uh, how or why it can be an ampl- amplifier. So I want to paint a picture for you briefly in regards to a workspace where AI is that collaborative partner. Because at the end of the day, if you're able to effectively weave a tool like artificial intelligence into your organization and work in harmony with your teams, this synergy allows a, a just an absolutely beautiful approach to tackling pretty much any challenge. Because at the end of the day, you've got to look at the strengths of AI and the strengths of humans. What can AI do really, really well? Well, at the end of the day, AI, AI can look at very data-intensive tasks. It can do those those things with ease. It can look at massive bodies of data with ease and provide insights, actionable insights from that data, which is typically very challenging for humans to reference huge, huge amounts of data. That allows the human aspect, those human workers, to focus on the strategic, the creative, more of the, those, those softer elements of it. And so when you have this collaborative approach with human intuition augmented by AI's data handling capabilities, this creates this phenomenal team that's really 
geared for success. And one of the ways and the reasons that we're even thinking about this, this cohabitation of AI and, and the human element is the fact of bringing efficiency gains to the table. We saw the talent shortage as we talk about that. There's massive demand for staff. We've got to go through big data. We've got to go through more resumes. We've got to go through more data in order to accomplish and be competitive. That's where AI can, can truly help us do that. Now, how do we distill it down to the staffing industry? And I know that's what everybody's really uh, here uh, for and talking around is the transformative power that AI holds for our industry. Well, I, I will say this, that uh, Forrester just released a phenomenal report on, on generative AI. And they, they put a quote that I had to chuckle about a little bit. It, it said that AI injects both magic and mayhem into the future of work. And if you've ever played on chat GPT or, or Bard for any length of time, you'll see, you know exactly what they're talking about here. But it's our job as industry leaders, as business leaders to capture the magic and avoid the mayhem. So how do we capture the magic? And so what, what I wanted to do was kind of pinpoint a few different roles within a temporary staffing branch and, and really highlight just at a high level, because this discussion is not really about the implications. David's going to talk about that later on the sales side. Uh, I'll give you a shameless plug. Um, next week at the Giggy conference in Dallas, Texas, there's some panel sessions. I'm actually on one talking around specific use cases of generative AI tools, off-the-shelf uh, use cases. I'm going to refer to a few in this uh, in this list here in just a second, but, but definitely want to uh, point out that there are some massive uh, gains that can be had. Uh, using the tools as they stand today off the shelf. So let's start just with business development managers, be, you know, salespeople effectively. Uh, from every facet of the sales process, when you're looking at data, prospecting, identifying hot prospects, top prospects, identifying seasonality within those prospects, predictive analytics, if you're familiar with that term, if you've used any kind of business intelligence tools, these tools are all now being powered. If you go to their, the websites that provide those tools, they're being fueled by or powered by artificial intelligence. And so AI is really helping staffing firms anticipate not only potential users of staffing, but more importantly, market trends to be able to capture customer needs before they actually happen, looking at trending within the market, trending based on job postings, tying them directly to the employer side, so that as salespeople were calling at the right time. Because how many of you guys, if you've ever sold in staffing, put that phone call into a, into a client and they stop and say, man, I wish you'd have called me three weeks ago. Uh, we just went into peak season. We already identified the three vendors we're going to use. That's not the call you want to make, right? You want to call, hey, you called me at the perfect time. We're lining up our vendors for peak season that's coming up in the next few months. AI and big data management can help make more informed sales approaches, sales touches on that front. Additionally, there's great tools to help salespeople craft B2B-based emails. Obviously, crafting creative content is huge from generative AI. That's right off the shelf. Write an email to do this or the, th that. But there's automation tools that buckle that together with prospecting tools. So you've got prospecting tools that identify the who to sell to, generative AI to create the messaging, and then the email integrations that will automatically send one-on-one, -on -one, not bulk emails, uh, and, and so on. That's some of the co coverage we're going to make in Dallas next week. Now, recruiters, obviously a quick uh, fix for recruiters for job descriptions. These are low-hanging fruit that pretty much I, I would assume everybody on this uh, webinar today is using. Uh, quick job description, pay rate data, standardizing processes. It's, it's really a no-brainer from the recruitment perspective. And there's about 100 different vendors out there building tools, screening tools, sourcing tools, using AI as the engine to drive. At the end of the day, the recruitment process, I, I would say the recruiter's role could potentially be the most augmented role from a generative AI perspective. So if you're not examining and looking at ways to implement uh, AI, generative AI, particularly the free acts aspect into the recruiter's day-to-day -to -day today, you're already behind the eight ball. So get out there and try to do some research. Again, we'll talk about some tips here in just a minute on, on how to do just that. As managers, business owners, uh, areas where AI can make a direct impact uh, data validation is absolutely critical. Uh, data uh, 
uh, when I say data validation, I'm referring to things like uh, ensuring that phone numbers are correct for your talent databases, ensuring that there is um, a good data in your system. And I know the CIOs and the CTOs on the call are probably high-fiving right now, air high-fiving, because that is so critical in order to operate effectively. If you have to do mass outreach to your talent, if you need to do mass outreach to your clients, whatever the case may be, if the data in the system is bad, it's worthless. So data validation is, is really, really critical. Another great managerial aspect or way to look at uh, iterative AI, generative AI, is in the learning and development phase as well. There's tools like Notion AI, which is an AI-enabled Wikipedia-type site where you can load your training data and have an AI engine provide Oracle-based answers utilizing your data absolutely phenomenal and at very little to no cost to be able to put these tools together and in the hands of your teams. So again, uh, I know I'm rattling through quite a few. If you have any questions about various tools, feel free to hit me up. My contact information uh, will be provided afterwards. But really, at the end of the day, each role in a staffing branch is has the opportunity to be augmented by AI. It's clear. It's easy. It can be off the shelf in so many different ways. With that said, if you're not using it today, your competition truly is. They're taking advantage of those resources. But if you notice throughout this entire process, the human is still present. The human aspect of staffing is still present. So when, when we're thinking about this, uh, there's even more implications into the future. I mean, we're just talking AI right now, but when you couple AI with other future tech, there are, are huge implications in, in, our, in our world today. Um, we haven't talked about virtual reality and augmented reality. They're, they're massive leaps forward in technology on that front. And when you couple in AI, it just brings it to a whole nother level. And in my mind, I feel like that it would be next on the horizon for massive game-changing impact for us all in the, in the world of work. So we keep talking about this shift. We, we talk about uh, really looking forward to what's coming at us. Uh, we need to think about how to really do so. And there's some practical steps to consider for you and your organization. And I, and I just want to share a few that you need to kind of checklist as you're thinking about introducing artificial intelligence within your organization. So a couple points, you may want to write these down, but you want to look at your business, step back for a minute. You know, a lot of people have a hard time kind of seeing the forest for the trees or many times uh, from the standpoint of working on your business versus in your business, you want to really look back and work on your business in this regard to try to identify where you can implement AI today on your business that would bring immediate benefits. Something as simple as, as job description writing or whatever the case may be. These are off-the-shelf free solutions that you can incorporate. There are many, many experts out there as well. Feel free to reach out to people, some paid, some free that like to share. Um, if you jump on Upwork, there are AI specialist everywhere coming out of the woodwork right now. Um, but look at those reputation uh, uh, scores and things of that sort to identify the right ones. But invest. Invest in how AI can impact your business. It's worth every single penny because the efficiency gains that you get from introducing this tool into your organization outweigh any real cost that you can incur on that front. And then experiment. Play around with it. There's many tools. And again, they're they're, they're, most of them are free initially. And, and again, many vendors coming out of the woodwork at low-cost SaaS-type solutions with limited uh, con contractual requirements that will allow you to take advantage of some phenomenal tools almost instantly. They turn them on and you have access to them. Now, I quoted, uh, I quoted Forrester's study earlier. If you do a quick uh, search, and, and maybe we can link it uh, into the chat afterwards, but uh, the generative AI study that they actually produced is absolutely fabulous. And they provided some strategies uh, for all employers to truly consider. They, they listed really five, uh, four, four key strategies. A couple of them are kind of combined. But they say invest in your RQ and your robotics quotient. So think about your EQ, emotional quotient. Invest in your team. Invest in, in, in your team to help them understand AI and understand how they can work with AI uh, uh, effectively. Uh, make sure that AI and, and augmentation is a centerpiece in your strategy. Talk about it with your team. Don't make it a scary thing that's going to take jobs away. Analyze the jobs that will most benefit from generative AI. I mentioned it earlier, recruiters, instant benefit overnight. And then upskill your teams. And we talked about upskilling uh, earlier in these sessions to really help them understand generative AI. But the moral of the story through the Forrester's uh, study and my conversation is embrace the change. Embrace the change. Now, I, I'm getting uh, the, the two-minute warning, so I, I'll, I'll draw it to a close and finish our discussion. 
our industry stands at the front lines of the overall health of the U.S. job market. AI is is not an optional upgrade for us. It's a necessity. We have to go that way as an organization. So don't stand still. Don't hold on to the past. Don't keep your head in the sand. Use this as an opportunity, a low-hanging fruit opportunity to leap forward, to ingra- embrace the potential that it brings uh, to the, in this fusion of human intellect and artificial intelligence. At the end of the day, it, 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 that co- cognitive collaboration will truly amplify our human capabilities. So let's not forget, though, that human element, that's the, what lies at the heart of our industry. That's the core for us today. That's what makes a difference. That makes our industry special. The connections, the relationship, the understanding, that forms the foundation of a successful staffing business. So as we stand on this precipice of this new era of this technology journey, I invite you, let's step into the future where humans and AI can collaborate seamlessly and we bring unprecedented efficiency and success to the staffing industry. So that that's all that can do. David, I want to turn it back over to you, sir. I appreciate the uh, the time and the opportunity to share my insights in regards to artificial intelligence. No, so. that was great. Thanks, Jason. I actually have a, just a one quick question for you. There's, a, I mean, I love the, the perspective that you brought to how to incorporate AI into the average staffing organization, but I'm bringing it down, organization, branch office, salesperson, recruiter's desk. They have a very busy desk. Now it's a new tool. What's what's the best way to create that human staffing professional integration so that it's welcomed and doesn't feel overwhelming? So this almost goes into software implementation 101, almost stepping beyond, take any tool and not just AI, but any tool. You have to obviously have it embraced by leadership, by branch management or whoever, can't have it poo-pooed by whoever. You've got to find dedicated time you know, to, to sit down and show the implication and then reinforce utilization of that tool. If it's a tool that everybody in the branch is using or just one, I mean, the, the, I'm sure we can go on to a whole tangent on change management and how to <laughs> yeah. successfully roll out and implement a software platform. But the key is change is hard. And a lot of times we may be excited about it, but the teams may not be excited about it. But once they get in there and use it, it becomes like a light bulb or an aha moment. So a couple of quick points. If you're going to introduce a new tool, if there's an opportunity to integrate that tool, make sure you integrate with it. Do not let it be standalone. If it creates any friction, if it creates any disconnect where they have to do something manually, pause, fix it, and then implement, wait to implement. Because I feel like we, we've tried that before. We roll something out that's disconnected and it's like, that's just distracting. I don't care how good it is. I have to manually type in something or I have to manually do this or that. So, yeah. And it reminds me of a, a marketing campaign we did for someone way back in the 1990s that had phenomenal results. And then we asked the salespeople, do you want to continue with this? And to a T, they said no. And we discovered in our postmortem, it's because their sales managers didn't trust a marketing campaign. So they had to do the marketing campaign quotas and their regular call quotas. We doubled their workload. And, and yeah, they it was better with the new stuff. But like, I don't want to do double the work. In- inadvertently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, when you say, you know, say it, you think about the friction, you're like, okay, AI, I can shortcut all these things. I can do things faster. But that beginning period where there's the learning curve or just the fear of like, what do I do or the uncertainty? Um, I, I love that, you know, help them get through that friction point, push the snowball slightly down the hill, and then they'll see what happens as it starts rolling. And some of the low-hanging fruit with generative AI, I mean, it seems like novelty at first, but then you start seeing some of the implications. It's Sometimes it just takes showing someone, hey, ask it to do this and provide, you know, and by the way, you can be rude to it. You can tell it, hey, that's not good. <laughs> Rewrite that for me or make it shorter or whatever. Something as simple as job descriptions. I tell our team, I mean, we place put hundreds and uh, hundreds of jobs online, there should not be one job posting that has, you know, forklift driver, $10 an hour, you know, warehouse, three word job description. No, no, yeah. that's horrible for SEO. It doesn't have any, any kind of real search ability. Take two seconds, generate something online, just some low hanging fruit like that. It makes it easy. And then it's like, wow, this, I look like a champion. I look like a hero. Yeah. Yeah. And, and localizing that content too. So you may have one out of the corporate database. That's our standard starting point, but now I can localize it, which is going to be great for that job from an SEO perspective. All right. I know you and I can go all day. Okay. Yes, and I'm already exactly. cutting into poor Jeff's time here. Uh, so <laughs> thank you, David. Thank Appreciate you very much for joining us. Yes. Jason. It was an absolute pleasure. Yeah.